after going late second round to New York in 2020. There were some pretty high expectations on Denzel Mims as a rookie that he just wasn't able to live up to. Following a rough start to his career, he's looking to bounce back big in 2021, and I for one am excited for the show. Start from their own 28. Here's Charlie Brewer with time. He'll take a shot down the field. Denzel Mims is there. Out of a super small town in Dangerfield, Texas, Denzel's football career started out of all things at quarterback. Although just a lanky freshman, Denzel displayed incredible athleticism that kept him on the football field. It seems like the coaching staff recognized that this skill could apply somewhere else as they moved him to wide receiver with the back of a quarterback for the last play of the game. Denzel ran a slant, caught the ball, and took it to the house for an 80 yard touchdown. That kind of stuff isn't normal, but a sign of what was to come for my man Denzel. Following the play, the coach even turned to his OC and said the phrase, he's gonna play receiver from now on. This seems like a fairy tale, but was the start of something beautiful for a star in the making. Although an absolute stud, Dangerfield has a population of under 3,000, and as a result made recruiting a bit tricky. I mean, why would you go to this small school instead of a much larger place right around it? Nonetheless, Denzel was talented on both sides of the ball as not only just a good wide receiver, but a talented cornerback and safety, with potential to make it big at either position. Even with his ridiculous skill on the football field, Denzel was still able to dominate elsewhere, and as a sprinter was a state champ at the 200 meter during his junior year. Needless to say, Denzel was a pure athlete, and after going off in the playoffs that season, gained attention from a certain school in Baylor. That interest led Denzel to attending a Baylor satellite camp where he was unstoppable, and as a former assistant coach would say, just a monster of an athlete. Following his performance at the camp, Denzel earned an offer from Baylor and eventually committed despite a late push by Oklahoma. Now that Denzel had earned a name for himself going into his senior season, teams focused their defensive attacks against the stud and forced the team to put him at quarterback and running back to throw off defenses. My man was being double covered time and time again, and if that doesn't tell you how good Denzel was, I really don't know what will. What's crazy is his coach used to be the OC at Rowlett High, and compared his experience with Denzel to how they used to treat Marquise Goodwin's situation, as they would just feed the beast time and time again, and you just couldn't stop them. It's high praise to be compared to someone like Marquise, but worthy for someone as talented as Denzel. After such a ridiculous high school career in Dangerfield, you would think that Denzel would be a borderline 5 star, but instead he was not even a top 50 wide receiver recruit in the country. With all this in mind, it's less of a surprise that Denzel was practically a wash as a freshman with under 30 yards. Although much less pizzazz than his domination in Dangerfield, it was only the beginning of something special for Denzel and Waco. Going into his sophomore season, Denzel was named the starter and he sure did play like it. That year he had over a thousand yards and eight touchdowns in what could have been one of the biggest turnarounds in college history. Following a one of a kind sophomore performance, expectations were high for Denzel as a junior. Although difficult to match, you would think that Denzel would be able to play on another level the following year, but it just wasn't the case. As a junior, Denzel had just under 800 yards and somehow still eight touchdowns. A bit of a regression from a stellar sophomore campaign, but not anything close to bad, and in fact still a solid year. Although a year like this would be normal for most wide receivers, Denzel is an anomaly, so there definitely had to be something off for something like this to happen. Well it turns out that Denzel was dealing with a broken hand the entire time, and that's kind of a problem for someone who catches the football. Although you'd think this would be a topic of conversation during the season, the fact that his hand was broken didn't come up until a year later, and proves that Denzel is a trooper. Anyways, Denzel was back in business as a junior with once again over a thousand yards and this time a career high 12 touchdowns as he earned first team all big 12 honors. After showing that he was back in elite form, Denzel was once again on the NFL's radar and his interesting mix of size and speed made him a unique offer for teams in need of wide receiver depth. Although he brought a great deal of stuff to the table, concerns about his off track junior year made the whole hand situation find its way into the spotlight as Denzel finally gave some background to his struggles that year. No matter the case, Denzel was a borderline top 5 wide receiver prospect in a draft class with talent like Justin Jefferson, CeeDee Lamb, and T. Higgins all ahead of him. Because of the abundance of star talent above him, Denzel was taken late second round to New York. After going 59th overall, Denzel took a trip to New York where he missed a great deal of training camp due to hamstring problems. Sadly, it seems like injuries followed Denzel out of Waco as he was put on IR till late November. 
The fact that Denzel was injured to start off the year limited his potential to get hot as a rookie. And after making his first appearance in week 7, he was only able to put up just over 350 yards in an underwhelming rookie year. Although he was at least able to get some action, Denzel was only able to have 23 catches in his first season, and he is still yet to have a single touchdown in the NFL. Following the whirlwind of a year, Denzel went into the offseason hopeful, but it seems like a certain plate of salmon had other intentions. Right in the middle of offseason practices, Denzel ate a plate of bad salmon and lost 20 pounds because of it after a bad case of food poisoning put him out for a while. Whatever it was in that salmon made him vomit for two weeks and upon that caused an intestinal infection that was severe enough to affect him all the way till the present. The whole food poisoning fiasco took a big toll on Denzel and hurt his start to training camp as he slipped down the depth chart and suddenly became a topic of conversation. Questions about whether or not the team would drop Denzel became more and more reoccurring. But eventually, it seems like Denzel was able to silence some of the talk with some stellar plays in 7 on 7. But it's a slippery slope to climb a depth chart with a bunch of new talent. Not only did Corey Davis join the team, but an underrated talent in Keelan Cole and potential rookie of the year in Elijah Moore. But anyways, Denzel had limited reps off of the illness and that roadblock allowed these guys to climb up the depth chart. Although a rough spot to be in for Denzel, if Sailor's word is anything to go off of, he's working his tail off and likely in for much more opportunities if his play matches his attitude. In his own words, he is almost there, and now that he's gotten some reps in the preseason, it looks like he was right. Against the Giants, Denzel played in 43% of snaps, which is good for practice, but usually an indicator of someone being lower on the roster than his colleagues. Nonetheless, Denzel was able to have 3 catches for 51 yards, and at least was able to prove that he could rise above a plate of salmon. Anyways, although the situation is already concerning, the fact that the snaps were later on in the game is a bad sign, as starters typically play a few drives early on in preseason games. At least Denzel played angry when he was in, and because of it earned some kudos from good old Selah after a solid 3rd and 18 conversion led to the first touchdown for the team. All in all, although a rough situation, it seems like Denzel is putting it all on the line, and I respect that a ton. Before we talk some more about my man Denzel, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe for more stuff like this, turn on notice in order to stay tuned, and grab a shirt if you want. Anyways, back to the video. I've made a few of these videos, but having Salmon as the catalyst for Dark Horse is something new, and it's just another part of this whole weird situation for Denzel. Imagine you come off of an injury in college, then go to the pros and get injured for half a year, and then the following offseason have horrible food poisoning. To say that Denzel's situation makes sense at all is far from the truth, but the fact that he has maintained his work ethic and determination through it all proves that he is not someone to mess with. Denzel is just an all around solid dude, and so he is able to deal with his stuff and then keep going. As a new father, Denzel has a unique leadership ability that pushes him to always find a way to make it happen no matter the situation. This capacity to do whatever is needed out of him comes from his amazing grandma and Glinda Mims, who was and is always there for Denzel from his days at Dangerfield High to the NFL. As his former high school coach would say, Glinda is his rock. This leadership ability from his grandma extends past the football field and shows itself in his humility towards those in any situation. A great example of this was shown when the Baylor football team rented out a bowling alley. And while the others were playing, Denzel let a man and his son join his lane after being turned away. Denzel's small school mentality when it comes to life has carried Denzel to the NFL, and that's why I think he has what it takes to be great once again. Throws, pass, complete! It's Mims inside the 10, Mims! Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed, it would be awesome if you could subscribe, like, and comment down below what stuff you want next. Anyway, see you guys soon, and peace out.